Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to uh, part uh, six, I believe. Six, uh, six. We are going through this historical criticism of Islam and early Islam, of course, in this case. And we talked about a number of things. Part of it is the geographical problem, historical problem. And now we're talking about the what we call the Qibla problem. And with me here is Dr. Jay Smith. Uh, uh, Jay, thank you so much again for uh, taking the time uh, just to pour out your heart to share with our Muslim audience the importance of these uh, information that probably majority of them don't have a clue uh, that it exists. Absolutely. Hey, listen, this has been fun because what we're doing, and, and just to remind the audience, we're not coming with a Christian polemic. This is not anything That's to do correct. with Christianity. We're coming with a historical polemic a historical critique, which is what needs to be done both not, it's already been done on the Bible, uh, and it's now been done on the Quran, it's been done on Islam, it needs to be done with the Bhagavad Gita, it needs to be done with the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Book of Mormons, the Granth Sahib, all these religious books need to go through this historical critique. Uh, the Quran is being done by these Orientalists, not by Muslims. Muslims are not doing this. This has been done uniquely by Europeans and Americans, uh, Australians who are Western scholars of Islam, Islamicists, because the Muslims refuse to do it. And, it ha and in the same criteria that's demanded of the Bible, we're now demanding of the Quran, the same criteria that's demanded of the creation of Christianity and the person of Jesus Christ is now being demanded of Muhammad and the creation of Islam. So that's why we're doing this, because not only is are all religions and holy men and books uh, need to go to this process, to be credible historically, you need to f follow and you need to have uh, succeed the what we call the historical test. So there should be no anger about this. I don't hope that Muslims aren't angry. I about hope what we're so saying. too, because we're not really trying to attack them here. We're trying to wake them up. We're not even talking about Muslims. The, you notice we haven't said anything about Muslims. We're talking about Islam. We're talking about Correct. Muhammad. We're talking about the Quran. We're looking at all the historical documentation. We're actually quoting their own traditions. Absolutely. We're quoting the Quran sometimes when it comes to Mecca. And now we're looking and see what does history say? What are the artifacts saying? What are the rocks in the ground? What, how, what are they speaking to? What are they saying? And, and I would now, say Muslims should appreciate that. Yeah. So now we've come to the Qibla and we're looking at the rocks that are exposed today on the mosques. And let me repeat again to those who do not know what we mean by Qibla. Qibla is the direction of prayer. Muslims, when they pray, they have to face Mecca. That's what we mean by Qibla. Today. Correct. Let's look at the first one. We already we, uh, talked about this first one when we ended the last segment. If we put it up on the screen there, you can see this is called the Mosque of the Two Qiblas. And uh, you can see the green arrow going down to Mecca today. That's what it looks like. There is the Qibla wall, the long, long wall where people line up uh, behind to pray face to Mecca when they do their tarakas, their prayers. Right. And if I may add, uh, why is it called the Mosque of the Two Qiblas or in Arabic, Qiblatain? Why? Because this is the mosque that was in Medina during the time of the Prophet, supposedly. And that's supposedly the mosque that first Muslims were facing towards, at least according to the tradition, towards Jerusalem. Then a revelation came in 624, says, now you change the direction and Muslims will say, oh, that means towards Mecca. And that's why it's fascinating that there, there was no structural reference to that until 1987 when they were doing a renovation. Uh, that, little, that little tag off to the left there was uncovered, and that showed the earlier Qibla. And you can see the red arrow is facing where the earlier Qibla, the first Qibla, uh, was almost the opposite direction, going north instead of going south Correct. from Medina. Uh, so this is going north. Now, when you look at a map, you see where that, look at the red arrow goes through. It goes right through a place called Petra to supposedly Jerusalem. And so most people thought this second Qibla 10 was nothing more than the Jerusalem Qibla. Exactly. And that's why I say, oh, that's normal. But remember, it was only pointing towards Jerusalem, according to what the Quran says, for two years. Correct. From 622 to 624. So that doesn't make sense that such a large structure would be built for just a two-year period and then re destroyed and rebuilt again. Obviously, this is saying something else. It probably is a much older structure. Now, let's get back. Let's, that's the first moss he looked at. Dan Gibson. Now, remember, everything we're looking at is from Dan Gibson's book. Correct. And he, it's, uh, he's looking at these Qiblas. He's gone to 65 of them. We're going to look at them, each one, and this is what he has found. And in every one of these slides, we're going to show you those four, those four uh, circles at the bottom, those four uh, they are really looking at the Qibla. Those are the Qibla directions for each one of the... The compass directions. Yeah, and it's Petra, Jerusalem, Mecca, uh, uh, and also the mosque itself that we're revealing. But that's why there's four of them. So it's showing you where the mosque, 
the existing mosque. Now, these are ruins of mosques. And here's one that's way over in Guangzhou, in Canton, in China. It's still existing today. That's why we know where the Qibla is. He's been to Canton. He physically went there. And in every one of these mosques, Dan Gibson went. He went physically. This is, he's the first to do this. And that's why we're asking, why haven't Muslims done this? Well, they don't think that this is a problem. They don't even want the knowledge that this is a problem. And that's why so many Muslims are now attacking Dan Gibson, because he did what they should have done. That's correct. And he went to the mosque, found the Qibla, the Qibla wall, which is easy to find. And then he looked using GPS, not Google Maps, like many Muslims have uh, denigrated him for. He never used Google Maps back when he did this in the 1980s and 1990s. There was no Google Map back then. That's correct. He used GPS coordinates that came out of MIT and also that came out of Japan, geological surveys. So he used the most sophisticated uh, GPS system to look at the degree of error. Petra, the degree of error, if this, you look at this uh, slide, it was 2.8 degrees. Jerusalem uh, was 4.86 degrees. Mecca was 7.11 degrees. So you can see that's closest degree was Petra. And so this was one facing Petra. Now let's look at this one here. When you look at, the, when you look at a map and you stand back from it, well, we're using Google Maps to show it, not Google Maps to do the... De the That's right, because it looked like flat versus... Uh, yeah. When you look at what Google Maps shows us from a distance, the red line goes right through Petra. It's too far south to go through Jerusalem and way too far south to go through Mecca. Mecca is the black line there. From Guangzhou, thousands of miles away, look how accurate the Qibla was back in the 7th century. Here's a Sherman Juma Masjid in India. Look at the date, 629. Muhammad was still living. The Guangzhou ma uh, Mosque was 627. Muhammad was still living then. Right. So this is at the time of Muhammad. He was still living at this time. Correct. And there you see the duty of arrow is 0.26 of a degree towards Petra. Jerusalem, 1.65. Mecca, 75 degrees off. Way too much. So you can see it's obviously that this is facing towards Petra, and yet this is in India, South India, way thousands of miles away. Now we come to Syria. The Jami Hama, well, let, let you say it since you pronounce it much better than I do. Um, Jami Hama Al Kabir. Much better, thank you. Uh, so I don't so desecrate Hama it. the Great, basically, Mosque of Hama. Hama the Great. And there you have in 637, Muhammad is dead now. This is five years so after his death. Look and see what the degree of error is 6.61. Obviously, this is facing uh, Petra. Way off compared with Mecca, way off compared. Now you can see the Petra uh, line, the red line versus the blue line that goes to Mecca. It's obviously facing Petra. Go ahead and give the name of this mosque. This one, Fustat, Masjid al Fustat. Now, this is the same mosque that yeah. Creswell and Fehervardi had looked back in 1905. That's, right. That's correct, yeah. Gibson went there and, he did, and they didn't have G, uh, GPS back then, so he used GPS and he saw why they got confused. They didn't have GPS to realize that if it was facing, they thought it was Jerusalem, but you can see that's the yellow line. The red line is where, uh, is where it was facing. The problem was he didn't have the GPS coordinates that he could write in the book. So he, he just said, he just looked at it and he said the closest one that we think is, is well, most and more than likely would have been Petra. That's right. And it's so close to Jerusalem, they would have known the direction of Jerusalem easily. You would think so. You would think so. Now, the Dome of the Rock. Now, here is, this is the this is the, probably the most important one of all the slides we're going to look at. Absolutely. The, it is so well known. The Dome of the Rock, you can see that beautiful building there right in the middle of the, of the picture. You can see it's got that golden dome. You can see from all over Jerusalem. Built in 690 to 691 by Abd al-Malik. Uh, this is the crowning achievement. It was the greatest structure of its day. It sits up above everything else, looking down on the rest of the city. And therefore, it should have a Qibla. It doesn't have a Qibla. I remember doing a debate with uh, Abdul Green back in, I think it was 1988, and he, 1998, sorry, he hammered me on this because I said uh, that, uh, that it has no Qibla. And he says, yes, it does have a Qibla. And he says, take a look at that, the southern portico, which you can just see there, one that's facing our direction. There it has Surah 2, I-147-148, uh, written on it, showing it the Qibla, because that's a reference of the Qibla. And then around the dome itself, there's Surah 17, I-01, which says he went from the greatest mosque to the farthest mosque. Yes, they, they, al Isra al Mi'raj, basically about the ascension. And he hammered me on that. And I came back afterwards and I said, oh, you, you got a problem though, Abdul. Uh, this, that southern portico and that dome uh, were not built 
in 691. 691 is when the original structure was built. It had been destroyed and rebuilt 11 times. What you're looking at was built in 1876. <laughs> so it's a little over 100. I mean, it's not, it's a little, I'm not even 200 years old. That's right. That is a much, much later uh, dome. That's the modern dome. The only original part of the Dome of the Rock are the two ambulatories in the center, in the middle. We're going to get to that later because Correct. those are significant. That's the only original part that we have still standing today that was built by Abdul Malik. He didn't know that. I said, you can see why they put those verses on those two domes. Because there is no Qibla there. And there should be a Qibla. But look at the entire structure. Look at the whole citadel. And what is it facing? It if you want to find out where the Qibla is, look at the entire citadel. And you cannot destroy and rebuild it again. It's there for perpetuity. Uh, and you can see it is facing Petra. That's correct. Now, how do we know that? Well, we'll get to that when we come to the Al-Aqsa Mosque built in 709 that you can see there uh, right in the foreground. But let's go continue on with now the, the how would you pronounce that? Uh, uh, Humayna Mosque. The Humayna Mosque yeah. in Jordan, 699. Now we're getting to the end of the 7th century. Look at the, uh, the d degree of error is by far much closer to Petra than any other three. Therefore, it's a Petrin facing mosque. Here we get number eight, the Amman Mosque in Jordan. And you can see the, by, it's in 701. <coughs> now we're in the 8th century. We moved in the 8th century. Remember the Qibla was canonized in 621, 624. That's correct. Yeah, that's that's right. 7th century, basically. According to tradition, 624 was when it was, Qibla, uh, when it was canonized. That's the Qibla. Now we're two years after Muhammad moved to Medina. Now we're in 701, 8th century, closest city is Qibla. Here you see the Grand Mosque in Sana, in Yemen, 705, we're in the 8th century. Only 0.36 a degree off. Now this one is fascinating because some people say it could be Jerusalem or it could be Petra, but because of the fact that it is facing, they say the one in Sana, Yemen, is also facing Petra. Because you go right through Petra to get to Jerusalem in that case. Correct. What's the name of this mosque? This one is uh, Khirbat al minya Mosque. In Israel. Yeah. 706. Again, by far, it is closest to Petra than either Jerusalem or, or, or Mecca. And you would know that because it's in Israel right close to Jerusalem. You would know if it's facing uh, Jerusalem or if it's facing Petra. In fact, it's almost completely opposite from Jerusalem. That's, That's an right. easy one to look at. That's right. Now, take a look. Notice how up to 706, all the Qiblas are facing Petra. You know, look at all the lines coming in. That's right. I mean, using I, Google Maps today, you, I'm using this just so people can see it easily. Look where all the lines come to. It's not a coincidence. I mean, uh, forget about the, the ones in the top. Everything else points clearly to Petra. If somebody right want to Petra. argue otherwise, those, they need explanation. No. Medina, Guangzhou, Sherman, Jamia, I'll let you do that. Fustat, Dome of the Rock, Humaina, Aman, Grand Sana, Gibba. All the mosques facing up until 706. Look at all the black lines there. They're all facing Petra. Not one of them is facing Mecca. That's right. That's right. You should look at this map and you can see there's a real problem here. Absolutely. Why is it they're not facing Mecca? If Mecca was a center of the uh, center, not only of history, because it's where Adam and Eve were sent to. If Mecca was where Abraham lived in 1900 BC, if it was the center of trade. And if it was the center of the Qibla by 624, why are none of these mosques facing it? Uh, we're, um, we're in this 8th century now. Let's move on. I want to just, before we do that, look at this here. All 17 Petrin mosques, Qiblas, fall within a 45-mile dotted circle, proving how accurate they were. Look at that picture. We're going to come back to that because that's hugely significant. As far away as thousands of miles away in uh, Guangzhou, how is it they got it that accurate? That was amazing. Okay, let's move on. Now we get to the Wasit Mosque, 706. This is the first mosque that comes up with a second Qibla. We Meaning call it a correction. Is it a correction? Hold on to that. Looks like that this is not towards Petra, not towards Mecca, nor to Jerusalem. It's somewhere in between Petra and Mecca. Interesting. And this is what Dan Gibson calls the between Qibla. Qibla. But this between designation is hugely significant, as you're going to see later. Here, then, is a Masjid i Tariq uh, in Iran, 708. It's facing Petra again. So in 708, another one facing Petra. So they're not uniformly. They're still 
between and Petra. Now we're into 709s in the 8th century. This is the Alexa. This is the other one that's built on the same citadel as the Dome of the Rock. Built in 709, so much later than Dome of the Rock, that was 691. And the closest city for both this is very clear that it is in the same citadel as the Dome of the Rock, and that's why we know the entire citadel is facing Petra. All right? Hugely significant. That's in Jerusalem. Interesting. Now, Jama... Okay, you go ahead and pronounce that. Uh, Umay al-Kabir. Jama' Umay al-Kabir. In Damascus, in Syria, 709. It's in the second one that, we, that he's been able to find that's facing that between direction. Not Petra, not Mecca. Uh, I'm sorry, that's al Jami' al-Umawi uh, al-Kabir. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Umawi yeah. al-Kabir. Now we get to Kirbat. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and you say this one. Khirbat uh, al-Mafjar. 714, it's back to facing Petra again. That's right. The Anjar Mosque in Lebanon. Now we're in Lebanon. Look where it's facing. 714. It's facing Petra, not Jerusalem or Mecca. Now we're in Syria again, and here is the third mosque that's facing in between. Look how accurate it is in between, though. It's almost exactly 0. 0.35 degrees. That's right. What's this one here? This is in Syria again. Hayr uh, al-Gharbi. This is 726. We're 100 years later. We're 100 years later. Remember the Qibla was canonized in 624. That's correct. This is 726, 100 years later, and we get the fourth mosque that is facing in between. Correct. Not Petra, not Mecca, but in between. Look at this mosque. Now, this is the significant one. This is the Banbor Mosque in Pakistan. Look at the date. This is the first mosque that we have been able to find, that Dan or anybody else has been able to find, that's finally facing Mecca. The very first one. Is not till 727. That is 103 years after the Qibla was canonized. So we can begin to see a shift now. A so transition. here's Qibla number three. Qibla number one is Petra. Qibla number two is between. between. And now Qibla number three is Mecca. Finally, we get Mecca. Whoo! Why? Ah, we're going to come back to that question later. Let's continue on. Go ahead and give the name of this one. Qasr al-Hayr al-Sharqi. In Syria. 728, that's in between. Though the one before that was Mecca, now we're back to in between again. Amman, Citadel, Mosque, Jordan. Now, I want you to look at this one a little bit more carefully. Notice there are two different mosques here. Uh, at the bottom where the red arrow is, that's the older mosque. That was built in 701. 701. We looked at that earlier, and that's facing Petra. They then rebuilt a mosque behind it and above it, and that's where the blue line is starting. That's the more modern mosque. That was built in 740, 730, excuse me, 730. So 730, that's facing Mecca. That's so between correct. the bottom one, which is facing Petra, and the top above, the one above it, which is facing Mecca, between 701 and 730, something happened. They, had to, they didn't even destroy the old mosque. It's still there today. You can see the ruins from it. It's still facing Petra. The newer one is now finally facing Mecca. So there you can see in one picture, in one place, where the two different Qiblas are from two different mosques. They've just, they didn't, they're, not, they're not using the Petran one more, but they're using the Meccan one. Ooh, to do that's, that's great. almost like the two Qibla mosque, except this way, the, this time they replaced the whole mosque with another one. Exactly. And we're going to get back to as to why that's significant. But hold on to it. Let's continue on. Now, this is the 22nd one. What's the name here? Uh, Jami' al Zaytuna. In Tunisia, this is North Africa. Now, take a look. Here's Qibla number four. This is a Qibla that doesn't face Mecca or Petra or Jerusalem. It is parallel to a line between Petra and Mecca. When you look at Petra and Mecca, take a line there. These are all parallel mosques. This is not, none of these mosques from North Africa or from Spain are facing the right direction at all. Almost neutral mosques. Ah, hold on to that thought. This is what we call the parallel Qibla. So this is Qibla number four. The first one is Petra. The second one is in between. The third one is Mecca. And the fourth one is parallel. Now, take a look at this one. Here is a Baalbek Mosque in Lebanon, 740. It's in between. The Mushta Mosque in Amman, Jordan. It's Petra again, 743. Back to Petra again. So there still is Petran mosques going on. What's going on here? Is there a confusion? No, there's not, and you'll see why there's not a confusion. I think I, I know why, but I don't want to ruin the surprise, of course. The Haran Mosque in Turkey, 744, it's in between again. So you're getting, through all four mosques are being represented now in the 740s. Now we get to six, 764, you get a Meccan Mosque, 
Uh, there is, I'll let you pronounce it. Oh, this one, Qasr uh, Khaidr. Uh, in Kufa, in Iran. Yeah. That's towards Mecca. Here is uh, the Ribat Fortress in Tunisia. Again, North Africa, it's parallel. All the ones in North Africa and in Spain are parallel. Uh, now we get to go ahead, this one in Oman. Sahi Ramada. And that is Petrin again. They still haven't stopped facing Petra as late as 771. Then go go ahead and give, and give the name on this one. Asma'il Omani Mosque. In Oman, 771. We think it's 70. He has a question mark there because we're not sure of the exact date on this one. But it's late 8th century. It's Petrin again, another Petrin Mosque. The Raqqa Mosque in Syria, that made famous by ISIS. That one is between the third Qibla. Sorry, the second Qibla, not the third, the second Qibla. Then here you have the Bibi Samarkand Mosque in Uzbekistan, 773. It could be Petra or Jerusalem. And he's saying that it's too close to tell because it's so close. Uh, you can see the green degree of error is almost exactly the same in this case. Then you have the Cordoba Mosque again back. This is in Spain, North Africa. It's a parallel. That's the fourth Qibla. Go ahead and pronounce that one. Jami' Uqba ibn Nafi'a. In Tunisia, it's a parallel mosque, being in North Africa. Now let's take a look. Here is a graph that shows the four Qiblas. The Petran Qibla starts from the very beginning up until 706. Then you start from 706, you have these in-between mosques starting to appear. And then you have a Meccan mosque, the third Qibla, starting to appear in 7, uh, nine, uh, 729. And then you have the parallel mosque starting to appear a little after that. So all the Qiblas were facing Petra up until 706, followed by a confusion for the next 100 years. 17 face Petra, 8 are between, 10 face Mecca, 6 are parallel. The Qibla was not finalized until Mecca, until, compl until all the mosques were facing Mecca, and that is not till 876. That's the late 9th century. And uh, I'm <clears> guessing <throat> there is a purpose behind all of this that people might think it's confusion, but... Dare I say there's maybe a political purpose oh, behind this? we're going to get to that. But obviously, we need to throw this out there. You've got a problem here. Correct. What's more, let's take now and let's do all four Qiblas and let's look at a map. Here is Qibla number one. This is the Petrin Qiblas. Can you see all the lines there on the map showing you where they're all coming in? This is straight out of Dan Gibson's book. Okay? Correct. The early Islamic Qiblas. Take a look at them. They are all almost exactly facing Petra. They're not facing Mecca. Nor are they facing Jerusalem. They're all facing Petra up until 706. And they continue to face Petra up until 772. Here is the second Qibla. This is the between. Look how accurate they are. They all come almost halfway between Petra and Mecca. Can you see that? Right. Yes. Zip right down there. Very accurate. That's Qibla number two. Up until 772 again, they're facing there. Then you get the Meccan Qibla. But this is not till the third Qibla. And these begin in 727, and they and then they're finalized. And after 876, every Qibla then faces Mecca. That's, that's 100 years too late Correct. when they're introduced. There are the parallel Qiblas. Can and you that, see? Yeah, they are that. all facing the same, except for one of them. They're all facing the same parallel direction that parallels Petra to Mecca from 732 to 866. So which of these Qiblas is the most accurate? Petrin Qiblas, the 17, are 2.9 degrees accuracy. If you were to take out the two worst, they're 1.9 degrees accuracy. The between Qiblas are even more accurate. They're 0.98 degrees accuracy if you take them all together. The Meccan Qiblas are the worst. They're the most inaccurate. If you take them all together, the ones that we've been able to find, or Dan's been able to find, they're 4.78 degrees accuracy. And the parallel, of course, you expect Now, why are we be... putting that up there? Muslims have come back and they've tried to trash Dan by saying, oh, yes, but the earliest Qiblas were, they just didn't know. There was a lot of confusion. They didn't know their direction. But finally, by the time Mecca was chosen, they knew their, their direction and they were a lot more accurate. No, they weren't. If you look at the statistics, the least accurate are the Meccan Qiblas. That's correct. So That's you correct. cannot make that excuse anymore. That destroys that argument. Significance of Petra. The significance of Petra, and maybe we can stop there and pick this up, because this is we we want now to look at why Absolutely, Petra. and I think it's a, it's a brilliant uh, uh, place to stop at, because uh, you're right, uh, picking it up from here will begin to shed more light on what's going on. So We thank know you. To need to know why Petra. Absolutely. Wait till you hear why. It's going to be fun. Come back. You'll see why. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, series that we've been going through related to the 
historical criticism of Islam, its qibla, and many other related topics. Until we meet you again, uh, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.